Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Adding functionality? More like adding a massive headache. My bartenders are stealing cash. Prevent it so I don't have to fire them. Um, you didn't try the brightness buttons before you took the PC apart, did you? A whole production site down for a simple error. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Adding functionality? More like adding a massive headache. You know these days when you feel totally out of breath and the day has just begun? Well, imagine adding a massively tiring team of people and a stupid ticket to the mix and you've got one of the worst Mondays ever. The ticket was nothing special a new printer has been installed in room X and all three ladies working there would like to have a new function working on the printer something called scan to mail obviously, as the case seems simple, yeah right, simple, I take the ticket. And this is where thing get interesting. I walk into a room dense with the smell of nail polish. I quickly establish the worst nightmare for any T2 IT support, three totally non-technical blondies and a massive load of paperwork laying on their desks, no order whatsoever. I greet the ladies, introduce myself, never been in that room and never met them before, and ask what the matter is exactly. They go on to explain how they would like to scan their documents and have them send to their email inbox. Okay, easy fix, methinks. I start going through the printer's menu. And can't find the options anywhere. Alright, we'll need to give the printer software an update to add that functionality. No big deal. I ask one of the ladies with the desk closest to the printer I'm lazy, I know, if she could let me in to do something with the printer. I get a very polite can't you see I'm busy, from the lady who is in the middle of doing a general manicure. All right then, which one of you ladies would like to take a five-minute break and let me work on the case from any of the stations? I ask politely. Finally one of them saves her work and logs out, letting me in. All righty then, let's log on to an administrative account on her PC. The problem is, the universal admin password is not working. I check our service tag on the machine and realize the device is 7 years old and the new password has been established around 2018 and all the old stations have not been updated. Cool, guess I'm logging in with my administrative domain account. Which took like 5 minutes to create on the workstation, the machine reeks of the olds and is running on an prehistoric HDD with write speeds of about 50 megabytes per second. Great. Finally the account has been established and I go online to download the newest firmware for the printer. Obviously the machine is working fine, which will be important later, so I assume the update should just add some functionality. But brother being brother. Cheap bastards can't simply add it as an implementable functionality, they have to launch an entire new firmware. I can already see this being a Luong day, and I haven't even started yet. I download the firmware update and go and install it. But suddenly I'm greeted by a surprise window please type in the administrator password for the device you are trying to access or something similar. Now, usually the password is on a sticker on the back of the printer. But in this case someone has removed the sticker, leaving me to do the guesswork. I immediately dial up my mentor and ask him if he could find the password for this very machine. It took him less than a minute I go on and type in the password and Password incorrect Oh boy, here we go again No I have to reset the printer to its factory settings, connect it up again, select the firmware update, type in the default password and install Which all takes about 10 minutes Until the printer tried to reboot and got stuck in a boot loop Great 20 minutes in and I've got one bricked printer and no idea what to do. Luckily, finding an older version of the firmware and installing it worked just well. What's even better, the older firmware still supported the functionality my clients have been after. Installing it requires a bit of technical trickery in service mode, but I glide trough that smoothly. Done. So I ask the clients their email addresses and they forgot what email domain they are in. 
At this point my frustration is due high, I'm inches away form boiling over so I take a deep breath in and go back to the workstation and open up Outlook. There I check the email syntax and the domain, then add the option to scan in 600 dpi straight to a specified email address as a shortcut to the first tab of shortcuts on the printer. I do the same with the other two email addresses, thinking I'm done. And when I try to send a scan of a random page lying around to the first email, I get an audible error. I completely give up at this point in time and phone my mentor again, asking him to lead me step by step through the process, while erasing the one-click shortcuts I've just created. Long story short, there was a global email server that needed to be specified in the printer setup that I had no clue about. And after what felt an eternity, finally all three freshly created shortcuts produce 600 DPI scans and send them with minimal time delay onto the user's email. Finally, I come back to my crypt where me and the other IT support guys are based and sit down so hard on my chair, it almost breaks. Let me tell you, I've never felt so mentally frustrated and exhausted before form such a simple ticket. Add that to the fact that none of the ladies gave me any clue how it was done literally a month earlier on the previous printer, and that one of the ladies didn't stop her nail work. And that I hate the smell of nail polish. Sometimes I ask myself how much more time it will take me to get used to this. I've been working for a bit over two months now. And how much of that frustration was caused by me sleeping literally three hours the night before? My bartenders are stealing cash. Prevent it so I don't have to fire them. We see this a lot and I'm not sure what the owners and management are thinking. Maybe employees are hard to find or maybe they like the employee even though they're a thief. This particular customer had video evidence of several of his bartenders pocketing cash. The customer gives them money, the cash drawer opens, they stick the cash in their pocket and then take change from the drawer to give to the customer. Why you wouldn't fire them and call the police is a mystery to me. But this customer was reasonably successful and had the means to pay for what he wanted. He already had a pretty sophisticated security camera system and wanted our software to interface with this camera system. To accomplish this he needed to get us in contact with the developers of the camera system software and explain to both of us exactly what his plan was. And this was his plan. When a sale is made, send a copy of the receipt to the camera system so it can display it on screen, with a timestamp, making an easy reference for the person reviewing the video. This isn't embedded into the video, rather it's handled more like subtitles. This gives you an easily searchable reference for any time cash changes hands. Display a series of codes on the screen that the camera must detect and acknowledge before the POS software can proceed. The goal here was to make sure that every step of the transaction was clearly seen by the cameras. The following are when the codes will be displayed. Pressing the button to begin closing the check. Selecting the payment type. Accepting the payment. Giving change if any is due. The purpose of the second part was to make sure that any time the bartenders handled money it was clearly seen. This would require an unobstructed view of the screen which would also make the cash drawer easily viewable to the camera. It's extreme but I suppose in a perfect world it might work. Also, in even a less than perfect world you can just fire your crooked bartenders that you already have on video pocketing cash rather than putting it in the drawer. We ended up doing the first part of his plan, but neither we nor the camera software developer were willing to entertain the guaranteed support nightmare of his second part. That's just so many points of potential failure that will bring the system to a halt. Neither of us wanted to put ourselves in a place where we'd have to support the inevitable failures. I hope he eventually chose to fire his bartenders. Um, you didn't try the brightness buttons before you took the PC apart, did you? I recently started a job at your friendly neighborhood computer repair shop. This particular story revolves around a laptop with the usual C/S machine powers on but screen is black ticket. I received the ticket, powered on the PC to confirm the black screen, and saw an image, but with no backlight. I relayed this across the desk to my boss, who came over, looked at it, and said yep. 
That's a bad backlight, and then showed me the procedure for ordering a new screen. Meanwhile I get sidetracked with a different task, and he begins disassembly of the PC. Eventually the part arrives, but boss is out of the office that day, so I'm the only one in the PC repair department. I grab the PC from the back, replace the screen, and get a nice little dopamine shot when I see that the new screen works as intended and I haven't broken anything in the process. So I'm fiddling around with the screen, testing it. I move the mouse, log in and get on the internet. I have achieved victory. Then I mess with the brightness buttons, moving it from its brightest to darkest setting. As the brightness hits its lowest setting, my heart drops. The backlight shuts off. Apparently on this model of PC, you can completely shut off the backlight. I had never considered this to be a possibility. It's totally impossible to read the screen without the backlight, so. What just case could anyone ever have for this? I sheepishly text my boss. Me, hey, sorry to bother you on your day off but, did you happen to mess with the brightness keys on this ticket before you took it apart? Apparently you can completely shut off the backlight on this model for some reason. Boss, no, I didn't know you could do that. I'm reeling. What if the screen worked the entire time, and we just never thought to hit the increase brightness key? What if we cost this guy all this money, had his computer away from him for all this time, and did all this work because we just didn't think to hit the button to increase brightness? The guy had to have mashed the brightness buttons at least a couple times before he thought to take it into a shop, right? I don't know, we all know how end users are. The PC is already reassembled at this point so I'll never know if that screen was truly faulty. This will keep me awake for the rest of my life, cold sweats running down my face. I'll never know. Was that screen really broken? A whole production site down for a simple error. I work IT support for an optician based in Paris, France. They have stores all over France and in a few other countries. They also have a subsidiary with a production site some distance away, still in Paris. This site is comprised of two buildings relevant later. August is an off month for the whole company. Most activities go down, more than half the personnel is on vacation. Including the entire personnel of one building in the distance site, meaning that building is closed off. Of course, that's when the troubles begin. We get a warning that the internet went down on the production site. Worse, the network material that we need to check is in the closed-off building. And of course, the most mobile tech of the team is yours truly, because I'm on a bicycle, everybody else depends on public transportation. Going there takes me 25 to 30 minutes, by 38 to 40 degrees Celsius, approximate 100 to 104 F. Also I wear dark trousers because of the dress code. I grab the keys of the closed-off building, only to find that it does open the metal curtain but not the main door. After searching a bit, the only option is to go back to the main site to find the other key. Another 25 minutes in scorching heat. Turns out the guy who handed me the key thought he had four identical keys. Wrong, he had two sets of two different keys and only gave me one. I gulp down a half liter of water and stash another in my bag courtesy of the company. Back to the production site I go. Again, 25 minutes of rather intense pedaling under the merciless sun of early August. Of course, opening the main door and the metal curtain did not end my troubles. The alarm was on, and the guy who administrated the alarm in most situations could not it can be remotely administrated, but only when the internet works, which, of course, is the one thing that had gone down. He finally gives me a code that will get me in. Of course the damn thing is super sensitive, and if you take 5 more seconds than needed you get your ears blasted. Ah, well. It only lasted less than a second. Finally able to get to work, I do the usual IT checkups. Power everything down, wait a bit, power it back up, so on. Nothing budges. I do note that the modem is stuck at a step in its power-up sequence. I take note of everything, then back to the main site. Once there, I tasked one of my colleagues with contacting the internet service provider to see what was wrong, since that error code was for them. 
I for my part, was done with my day and quite happy to be rid of that garbage for the day. I'd spent my whole afternoon either on my bicycle or waiting for stuff to happen, with little AC anywhere. A couple hours after I got home, my colleague told me he'd found the crux of the matter. The contract with the ISP had not been renewed, and of course the service had been cut. Even better, the service would take up to a week to be back up. It was a vital part of the still active production team's work, and it was completely inoperable. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.